Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to uh, our Steelcase workshop. Thank you for coming. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, we're uh, going to do a lot of things. In fact, I'm just going to get the pen. Uh, uh, so we're going to be actually looking at uh, a bunch of things. Um, uh, so welcome to the Steelcase room. Um, I should say that because of the web uh, cast that's going on right now, uh, we can't necessarily use the entire room. Um, there are some high tables in the back. Uh, we would have liked to use them, but we're going to sort of restrain ourselves to pretty much the regular small leveled tables here. Um, but uh, just know that there's a lot more flexibility than what we can show today. Um, so before we begin, I just want to introduce who we are. Um, so um, I'm going to pass it to Julie Anne. First. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Julie Anne. I'm a pedagogical support coordinator since uh, almost five years uh, here at La Salle College. My name is Julie Anne. So when I was hired, I was I'm there to mix up because our names. Uh, I'm, I'm I have the same role as Julie Anne. I'm uh, in the college since um, 2015. So yep. Yeah. And? Okay. Um, obviously, I don't need a mic. Uh, <laughs> um, my name is Jonathan. I'm a humanities teacher. Uh, so I've been teaching here since uh, 2007, so I'm getting old. Um, and uh, I teach in humanities, but I also teach in English literature, um, ESL, arts and letters as well. So I sort of moonlight here and there. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, for now, I'm going to sort of ask you to do something before we get into the content. I want you to do something for me. Um, there should be some pens uh, on the desks. I want you to grab those pens. And you do have post-it notes uh, as well. No, just a, a regular pen, not the dry uh, marker. Uh, so a regular pen. And I want you to, to um, do something for me. Um, I want you to look around the room. And I want you to notice what you see. Um, and specifically what I'm looking for is what do you notice about the classroom, specifically visible factors that will impact a teacher's role. So when you look around, what are the things that you notice that can impact a teacher's role <coughs> in the classroom? And I want you to jot down, write down what you see, okay? Uh, just one or two things, essentially. Um, for the think, I'm going to ask you to take a look at the opportunities that a teacher can leverage. Um, in the classroom. Uh, so what can they, uh, what are some of the opportunities? And uh, I'll just give you a hint. I, I put this sofa right in the middle right here. So there's some interesting things going on there. Um, and finally, uh, wonder is burning questions. I assume that you're all uh, tick uh, people, T-I-C, OK. Uh, and not the other ticks. Uh, those, those are <laughs> <laughs> nasty little buggers, yeah. Uh, but uh, <laughs> IT reps, <laughs> IT reps. Uh, so a burning question, um, something that you have a question about um, in terms of like what, OK, can you do this? Is this possible? What, I want to know more about this. Um, and so write down one or two points uh, on that. I'm going to give you around two or three minutes to do so. And once you're done, I'm going to actually put um, these nice whiteboards. You're going to put some sticky notes on them. Um, so I'll give you two minutes for that. I'm going to prepare the board. Um. So once you're done, I would invite you to actually take that sticky note and put it on the respective whiteboard. You see we have, um, I'll show it to the camera for those who are on the web, uh, we have these nice whiteboards here. Uh, so I identified them with the title. I just want you to put a post-it note, uh, your post-it note, stick it right on there um, and um, we'll do something with them once you're done. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Below, it's written uh, <laughs> visible factors that will impact a teacher's role, opportunities that a teacher can leverage, yeah. and burning yeah. questions. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for the small little writing. I didn't expect it to <laughs> come out that small. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. It's perfect there. Wait. Wait. You, you'll just put it there. No okay. I'm going to pass you the pen. Get up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Walk around. Uh, it's dynamic uh, and kinesthetic. Perfect. Okay. Actually, um, once you're done, so we'll give it another maybe 30 seconds. Um, I would invite anybody, oh, to think. There's missing a few things here. Um, but uh, once you're done, I would invite anybody to just actually pick this up. I would do this as a teacher, but I want you to sort of see this. Uh, you can pick this up and uh, you can put it uh, right on these aisles uh, right here. So if anybody has, you know, anybody's brave enough to do this, uh, you can <laughs> get up and, uh, and try. Yeah. Um, I feel a little bit Put it on the board and put it in the order that, uh, that, that is on the PowerPoint. So see, think, wonder, um, please. Thank you. And there you have it. Um, you get to see a little bit of the features. Uh, this is a preview for later on in the conference. But um, before we talk about any of the things that you're posting, uh, I do want Julianne to invite um, Julianne to uh, start talking about, uh, about the context and the history of this room and how we <coughs> got here. Okay, so why steel case? A uh, little bit of context. Uh, first of all, <laughs> this is my part. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, okay, um, here you go. Uh, I don't need this. Okay, so uh, sorry. Okay, agenda. We're a little bit nervous. Um, so why steel case? So today, what we're going to do is you're right. We're going to do. You know, we're going to basically say why why steel case. How did we get here? The, you know, a little bit of context. We're going to talk about specifically the collaborative room. Uh, we did have a collaborative room a while back. We're going to show you some pictures on that. Active learning community. We're going to talk about our active learning community. And then finally, we're going to talk about Steelcase, this very room, and how we got here. Um, it's an epic journey. Uh, features of the Steelcase room. So then the second part is I want to sort of talk about the, the technicalities of this room. What, what is unique about this room? Pedagogical advantages, I do want to touch on some of the um, uh, sort of the opportunities that this offers for learning uh, for students specifically. Uh, teacher experience, um, I do want to share some of my experience, but also some of the experiences of other teachers in the college. Uh, what do they say about it? Some positives and a little bit of negatives, but uh, mostly positives. Uh, presentation of the Eno board. I'm sure as tech uh, reps, uh, you probably are very interested in this. Am I right? Uh, this sort of smart board kind of setup. It's not a smart board. It's actually an Eno board. So I'm going to talk about the features of that. Um, this. Um, this thing. This yeah, is this the most that. interesting. It's a, well, I think it is. Um, and finally, uh, we're going to leave room for question period, and that's where the wonder section is going to come in. I'm going to talk about that. Okay, so that's what's in store. Now, <laughs> Julianne, <laughs> take over. <laughs> okay. So a uh, little bit of context. Since uh, 2011, we have started experimenting with the uh, collaborative room. Uh, <laughs> this is the uh, 20. 2206, uh, Nicole is, uh, is doing a workshop there right now. Okay, so.
So basically, we, we also organize lunch and learn discussion on active learning in fall, in fall 2013. We created an active learning committee directed by a pedagogical support coordinator involving teachers from different programs in uh, 2013. And we have uh, also been participating in the SALTI symposium uh, every year. And uh, Jonathan, you can follow with the uh, workshop you, uh, you did. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so what we did is actually last year we, we received, it's a little bit of a side note, we received a grant um, of $2,000 from Salties to implement smart pens um, in the classroom, which is actually very similar to this pen. I had no idea because uh, when we received the grant, we didn't have this room yet, but it's the same thing. There's a camera in the pens, you write on, the, on a paper, and uh, it was just really interesting. And so, um, yeah, so Salties, we have a, a good relationship with Salties. They're um, in, at Dawson as well. So there we go. Yeah. The goals. Yeah. So the goals of the Active Learning Committee. So Julianne mentioned um, the Active Learning Committee. Um, what we were trying to set out, and this is a few years back, was we realized that there's a problem with motivation in students' um, learning. And we were trying to motivate them. Um, I noticed in humanities courses, for instance, uh, boys specifically, uh, boys or men, uh, were not as interested in the material. And I felt that we needed to sort of uh, have some interactivity. Uh, but it wasn't just me. Other teachers also noticed these things. So we're talking about motivation through learning activities that promote independent learning and higher level of thinking skills. We also wanted to look at, when we talk about Bloom's taxonomy, getting to the create parts, you know, the, 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 the higher order of knowledge. Um, provide opportunity for students to take hands-on approach to their learning. We wanted them to take charge, essentially. We wanted to get away from teacher uh, uh, lectures and more active learning, um, uh, sort of hands-on approach so that they do something. And we wanted to encourage students to think about the learning process. Um, we wanted to tap into metacognition. Of course, as a humanities teacher, you can imagine how metacognition is important for me, right? Thinking about how to think. Um, so we were really, these were the big topics of the Active Learning Committee for a while. Um, and then um, we get Steelcase. <laughs> um. And why Steelcase? Because of the popularity of our uh, collaborative room, um, the limitation of that room, static tables, so we cannot move them, no technology. There were also uh, interest in investing for a second second collaborative room in the college. So we apply for the Steelcase grant in 2016. That's when I come in. <laughs> uh, so uh, me and a colleague, Marie Fortin, uh, we were in charge of the implementation of that room with our uh, our superior, our supervisor, <laughs> Mathieu Lipin. Uh, so we had to prepare a plan of the room uh, to, uh, to meet our needs. And they were very flexible about the number of students, what we wanted, what we needed. And um, we, had to <laughs> we had to prepare an action plan. They installed the room. Uh, a training was, uh, was um, organized prior to the beginning of the uh, of the semester to prepare the teachers. Uh, they did activities uh, during a two-hour session, uh, and uh, then they were free to go. Uh, we had the chance to uh, meet them many times during the semester. In fact, having the grant means doing a research project for two years. So we have to collect data. Uh, usually, we think about engagement, motivation, success. These are the <coughs> normal things to think about when we uh, uh, when we think about a room uh, for active learning. We were also curious about uh, the development of communication skills, as well as the learning strategies that students uh, use uh, during their learning. So uh, we have surveys targeting teachers and students, the data collection that I mentioned earlier, uh, and we organized meetings with teachers uh, that were kind of related with the uh, active learning committee. And also we did at the end of each semester a focus group with students to ask more specific questions and have them talk more freely than 
in a survey. Uh, then we're going to have, so the data collection is now over. We're uh, starting to do the, uh, the to analyze them. Uh, so I do not have numbers to give you right now, but still. And um, so we're going to produce a report, and we're going to do this next year also. So it's pretty much the same thing as training for teachers, et cetera, et cetera. OK. So now I'm going to take it away. Uh, so I don't need the microphone, but I'm stepping here um, so that the transition's good. OK, um, Okay. so let's get back to, to this activity, because the point of this workshop is really to show you the features. I mean, yes, you understand the context, um, and we did come a long way. But when we were introduced to this room, we were sort of in awe. What, you know, what, do, we, what do we do with this? And so in September, we came in. Um, and, uh, you know, and there was a trainer from the company, and they were sort of showing us all the features. But it was overwhelming. Um, so um, I'm going to sort of take you through the steps as well, uh, because it worked out quite well. You know, we we're very excited to first class and so on, because we noticed all these features. So let's get back to, um, am I talking too fast, by the way? Do you want me to slow down? OK, OK, <laughs> OK, it's good. Um, so um, let's get back to the activity See, Think, and Wonder, um, the See, Think, and Wonder activity. So what I see here is, I'm going to start with C, and I, I want to sort of comment on some of the the things uh, that are set. Like, so this nice red post-it says, you know, two heights, different configuration, and whiteboards. Um, OK, so let's talk about the heights. Do you want to say anything about the heights? So who wrote the red post-it? OK, two heights. What, what, is, what is up with, what, what do you think? Usually, uh, when you go into a classroom, all the desks are arranged in a certain fashion. They could be like in a, a U, or they could be in, in rows. But usually, they're all the same height. So yeah. uh, I guess there's curiosity about why the different heights. Uh, right. OK. Well, it's really interesting. So I'm going to walk around. And imagine, well, take a look at Jalian, actually. You know, uh, <laughs> strike a pose. Uh, but uh, take a look at, um, at Marianne. She's, you know, she's standing up, and she's um, learning, right? Um, so what we noticed is that some students prefer to stand up. They don't <coughs> always want to sit down, and they learn better. Uh, some studies for health reasons, they recommend actually that we stand up as well. Um, so we wanted to offer flexibility in terms of, of that. And that's why we put the two heights, because those tables can be adjusted to this height as well. But we felt that this would sort of contribute to a, a more flexible environment. So that's an interesting thing. Juliette, you had something to say. Transition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, if I can add something. Uh, one of the teacher mentioned that uh, noise-wise, the fact that you have two different levels, the uh, the global noise is lower, so it's it helps regarding the uh, classroom management. Yeah. Okay. Different configurations. Um, and whiteboards. Let's talk about the whiteboards. The, the configurations we'll get back to in a second. What about the whiteboards? Did anybody notice the whiteboards? Mm -hmm. What, what can you do with that? Um, and if you didn't notice, on the sides, there are nice whiteboards as well. Right? Doo -doo. Um, now, that's really accessible. But what can you do with these whiteboards? I mean, just imagine what you can do. Um, now, you all have dry markers at your tables. Uh, what, does, you know, what, what can you do with these? So you can draw, obviously. You can make a happy face. Um, and that, you know, a lot of students doodle. But does anybody wonder what are the possibilities with this well, sort of thing. Yeah. And you want students to take notes on something that they would share with the rest of the class, then it's great because they don't, I mean, it, it's, it's also good to have them, you know, you could like paint the walls with whiteboard. I'm going to pass yes. the, the microphone. <laughs> Sorry. You yeah. could paint the walls with whiteboard paint, and, and that is an approach. And, yeah. and But what I like is the flexibility. So if students prefer to stand, and, yeah. and there are some, there are some people that, that, that say that having people stand when they're brainstorming actually makes them more active. Yes. So that's nice. But if, if they wanted to sit, then they can sit at their, their tables. Yeah. And then they can put their whiteboards here to display. That, I love that feature. Yeah. So yeah, there are lots of yeah. Well, that's it. What's really interesting is the whiteboards are, are actually a hit. If I were to name one thing about this room that teachers absolutely love, it's not the smart board. That's a second. Uh, it's, it's really these things. Mm. And there was even talk to introduce these in traditional classrooms, because they're so popular. The students love them as well. What's interesting is that a lot of students, they kind of reject this notion of writing with a pen and paper. I guess it's too old for them, that technology. But they, they enjoy doing this. And then they take a picture of it, right? And I find, well, you know, 
I don't have a problem with that, but essentially what they do is at the beginning of the semester, I'll give you an example, they would present themselves and I'd say, you know, uh, present who you are. You'd be surprised what kind of creativity comes out of this. Uh, some students draw. They don't actually write words. They just literally draw and they say, well, this is a depiction of how I see myself. Uh, and this is right at the beginning of the semester, so it helps you break the ice. When they're doing group work, uh, I used to do activities where they had to write on paper and pen. And just like you said, by using this, they just post it like this, the whole class can see what they did. So you can share the results quite easily. And you can also, if you ever did storyboarding, for instance, for its arts and letters course, for a literature course, or even just looking at process, you can use this. Um, and these things are essentially, you know, ways of showing the whiteboard in a chronological order, in a story order, in a narrative order, in a sequence order, whatever you want to do with it. So students, you can actually take this in the back of the room and, and do that. So there's a lot of flexibility with the whiteboards. And I indirectly spoke about this as well. Um, yes, you have, Ryan. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jonathan, the other thing I find interesting about the whiteboards is it's a great step for democratizing the learning in the classroom in the sense that you're no longer the teacher that controls the chalkboard. Yeah. Uh, you're delegating part of your authority to the students mm -hmm. to co-create and uh, I, guess, yeah. I guess it's a constructivist. Well, uh, it's sort of yeah, yeah, actually, um, without getting too deep into it, yes, it is constructivist because it, that's exactly what happens is that they get into groups and then they start helping each other because it's fun, first of all. Uh, and, and I actually do sit back. I noticed that in this classroom, the more I got used to using the room, the less I was doing, <laughs> which is a good thing for a teacher sometimes. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it, does, it does take, um, although you're right, it does shift. It takes away the responsibility for me to teach and the students take over. Um, and I'll speak about that later. As a teacher, you also have to change the way you teach, and that is not easy um, by any means. I'm still sort of, it's only been one year, but I think I need a few years to perfect that. But you're right, it's, a, it's sort of a constructivist, it lends a constructivist view. Um, let's take a look at some other things. The couch in the lounge. Interesting. Uh, so I had hopefully, you know, nobody was bold enough to do this, uh, but I was, I was hoping that somebody would sit down and, you know, lounge a little bit, um, but nobody did this. Why? <laughs> Normally Why? it's not there, though. It's not there, no. Normally it's in the corner. Yes. However, you can do it in different ways, and I'm going to show you different things. But why? What, what, do, we, what do you think about the couch and the table? Um, and by the way, I'm going to do something rebellious. You can... Right on this baby, right here. Hi. <laughs> uh, you can write. You can jot down. It's a glass table, so glass tables lend themselves really well to dry markers. Um, but what can you do with this? Collaboration. What collaboration? Yeah. How so? Working team. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they can more work in team uh, just just because the, the infrastructure. Right. So just by sitting down, right, you get into a mindset where you're actually dialoguing, talking, uh, as opposed to being taught, uh, right, to some extent. And actually, this couch is interesting. This couch is um, s most of the time in the corner of the room. Um, and a lot of teachers were puzzled about what to do with this, uh, this couch. Well, some teachers actually experimented. There was an English teacher who used this room, uh, well, these uh, couches, she put them exactly where it is, and um, she was teaching her course. And it actually worked really well, according to her experience, because we keep a blog, a record. I used it for oral presentations. I did a David Letterman sort of uh, take, uh, well, David Letterman before he retired, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and we actually had an audience in the background, the, the tables were in a very unique sort of U shape. Um, and uh, they were sitting casually at the couch. Uh, there was water bottles, bottles. Uh, and, um, and it was very, very pleasant and it was very laid back. It was an ESL course, so English is a second language. Um, so yeah, um, another thing that's really interesting about um, this, and this is kind of the opportunity, is if you wanted to speak quietly to a student and the couch was in the corner, it's perfect. 
um, everybody's working on their thing. You can sit down and sort of dialogue with the team and say, okay, well, what's going on here? You need some extra help. What's, what's happening? Um, so there's some really interesting things to do with the couch, but it does require thinking outside the box and getting away from this sort of thing that we're used to where we're teaching. It's a teaching environment. What are you talking about? Sitting on a couch comfortably? No, that shouldn't happen. Um, so it does take a while, but I, I do believe that it shouldn't stay in the corner. I think we need to use this more. So couch, um, yes. Um, what else? What else do we notice? Anything else before I move on? Um, uh, oh, yes. Yes, the cable, the, the, um, the things. Did anybody notice these poles right here? These. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. This is awesome. Um, I, I'll tell you, uh, I'll show you a project a little bit later, but this thing allows you to do so much. It sounds like a simple sort of cord. You know, it's an extension cord, basically. It's a pole. There's six uh, plugs. But with the amount of students bringing their technology right there, they can plug it in, charge it. But you can also, as a teacher, utilize this by bringing several projectors um, to the, t the room, and you're going to see this. Uh, you can ask them to bring their laptops. You can even ask them, if your course allows it, to play a video game um, and on their individual laptops with several projectors on the wall. And you're going to see this, actually, in the room. This is something that I could not do in a traditional classroom. I tried to do it. But the amount of extension cords I had to bring was insane. So uh, power cord, very interesting, yes. Um, so there's a lot of interesting things. Okay, In terms of think, uh, oh, oh yeah, one thing I should mention, the wheels. You also notice that there's a lot of wheels. Now, because we have a web uh, cast that's going on, I can't ask you. I had organized some activities where we would change the tables in different formations. This is a little bit complicated because of uh, all the, the, the material. But just notice a couple of things here. There are wheels on these chairs. And these chairs are shaped in a very unique way. Right? Why do you think that is? Something to bring about as well. You see, your bags, you can actually put them there. I'll show you an example with my bag. Um, you don't want your bags on the floor, and so you actually put them right here. And so when you decide to roll on a whim in the middle of a class, you say, okay, this formation, whatever, um, they can roll, no problem, okay, and it's super comfortable as well, right? And you also notice that the tables have wheels as well. So you can imagine the kind of configurations that are possible, okay, in um, in the classroom. You can use a conference room. I'll show you many different things. Okay, So these are the basics of this room. There's high tables and so on. Um, and so what I wanted to point out is you know, there's the think, right? So there's chairs, tables, whiteboards. Whiteboards are fantastic. Aisle, that's the thing in there. Uh, lounge area, desk placement, right? And the Eno board. The Eno board, we're going to have actually a good five, ten minutes to talk about the Eno board as well. Um, so what are the uh, well, do you have any lingering questions that I didn't address that you feel that you wanted? Oh, this lamp. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting thing. Um, I like it, <laughs> but I'm not sure what to do with it. Usually the couch is right under it, so it creates this loungy um, feel. At night, though, I was here at 9 in the evening um, sort of thinking about this presentation, and it's amazing when the lights are down, you know, when there's no daylight and this light is on, it looks really, like it feels really comfortable to be in this room and to teach, essentially. What? Cozy. I can Cozy. Putting, like, putting students under it yeah. to create, you know, just with their chairs to create a sense of, of coziness and conviviality. Yeah. Well, it does. <laughs> it certainly does, especially in winter nights uh, when it gets dark at yeah. 4 and you're teaching. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's really cool. Um, so in any case, that's cool. Okay. So pedagogical advantages. Well, essentially, as I was pointing out, um, it gets you away from this, teacher-focused classrooms. That's what we want to get away from. And it's a little bit of a joke, right? So less us, more them, creating student-centered contexts for learning. Um, I'm going to do this on purpose. Hang on a second, just so I can highlight uh, or actually circle. There we go. Um, so, you know, this picture right here, ooh, look at that, fancy. Um, um, so, it basically we, it gets away from this, and there's a little joke right here that says, you know, I think it's an exaggeration, but there, there's a lot of truth in saying that when you go to school, the trauma is that you must stop learning and you must now accept being taught. And we want to get away from that, right? We don't want students to stop learning and just be lectured to. 
Uh, we want them to do things on their own and work together. Uh, so this room, I believe, from experience, does this for me. And I'll tell you why. Um, why are you not moving? Oh, OK, here. There we go. Um, it also, are you familiar with this cartoon? It's pretty famous, right? It's pretty popular. Um, so for those who don't know it, um, it's basically the teacher saying, for a fair selection, everybody has to take the same exams. Please climb that tree. Now, obviously, the fish has problems here. Uh, serious problems. That doesn't mean that the fish isn't talented. It is, but it just isn't talented climbing trees. Um, and so what I think is that it allows students with various um, potentials, I would like to say, or limitations, um, to actually contribute to the classroom in significant ways and to hone in on their strengths, right, as opposed to their weaknesses to some extent. So it gets away from this and it allows for the kinds of things, you know, like collaboration or teamwork or, um, <laughs> you know, yeah, I like this one. Uh, keep calm and start collaborating, right? So don't worry. Don't stress about it. Your friends will help you. Uh, you'll get through this, okay? Your peers will help you. Um, and some of the research has suggested that a collaborative room, and I, I'm, this is not news to you, uh, does lead to deep learning or better learning. Um, this has been done in you know, research in medical school, for instance, uh, and so on. So this is quite interesting. Okay? Um, so what are the advantages? Um, well, it allows teachers to create an active learning best practices community, as I'm mentioning. It allows teachers to adapt a student-centered learning environment. Okay? So imagine that I, for instance, ask students to look at the connection between experience, knowledge, and intellect, whatever. Okay, draw clouds and show the connection. You're trying to learn how to ride a bike. How does that work? Well, I can easily just take this. By the way, I didn't mention about this. I can just go around and sort of sit and say, now is it going? <laughs> what kind of work are you doing, you know? And sort of talk in a sort of more informal way, right? Um, and I can go around. I mean, this thing is awesome, um, you know? Uh, it's really fun because you can balance on it. And you can imagine the advantages for ADD students, for instance, uh, attention deficit disorder students. Um, so students who have this kind of disability, some of them have commented, because we've done surveys, as Julia said, that this actually helps them concentrate because they can sort of you know, move around as they're paying attention to the teacher. You know? Um, so this is actually a really good thing. And this isn't just for teachers. I do give it to students. OK, I have no problems with that. Um, so um, you can sort of create a friendly or uh, approach, right? Um, it's uh, a constructivist, as, as you have mentioned, uh, Ryan. Um, it's a constructivist approach to learning. And it's really about taking away the, the control from the teachers and giving it to the students. And this can be an interesting experience, a scary experience for some teachers, um, but a rewarding experience, I think, for learning uh, to some extent. OK, uh, moving on. Um, how are we doing? It's good. You guys are good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. OK, so what are the positives? What are the positives? Um, so it keeps the students engaged. Um, this is based on my experience, but also on a lot of blogs. So we have to, as teachers, when we teach in this room, we have to put up six blogs, each teacher that teaches in this room. So we have a lot of feedback. And what kind of activities have we done? What pedagogical uh, tools have we used? How did we place the room? This is all recorded, OK? And so I read through those blogs. And these are the positives, not just from me, but from what those comments come out. So it keeps the students engaged. Really interesting thing to mention. Um, there's a few teachers that commented. It hasn't been my experience, but it has been the experience of several teachers and my colleagues. Break time would happen, so we have breaks every 50 minutes. Most of the students don't get up and leave the classroom. They stay sitting down, and they continue to work. Think about that for a second. That has not been my experience in a traditional classroom. So it keeps the student engaged. Favors collaboration between peers. Of course it does. Look at the tables, camaraderie, right? You can shape it in very different ways, and I'll show you how. Um, uh, encourages innovative teaching. It makes you think outside the box. I'm going to show you a project that a uh, teacher uh, at the college, Pascal Warmos, tried in this very classroom. And um, this is something she would not have tried had it not been for this classroom. Um, so uh, encourages class debates. 
Of course, uh, if I teach an ethics course, it's really easy. I split them up into two sides. I say, for against the legalization of marijuana or euthanasia or whatever. And they have to argue, you know? And it's great because there's an actual physical division. It's really cool. In traditional classrooms, that didn't work. Go on, yes. May I, uh, may yeah. I add that by uh, being able to have a support such as these, uh, and they are standing at their own place, they are talking, they feel more comfortable talking. So they take, they, um, they talk more freely, and they uh, are more, more bold about it. Yeah, they are more bold, actually. It's true, they express themselves a lot more to the detriment sometimes of teachers. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, um, integrates different forms of intelligences in the classroom. Um, I, I had hoped that uh, you sort of got a sense of this. When I asked you to put the post-it notes on the board, you had to get up physically and put the post-it notes there. Um, well, if this was a normal classroom, I was teaching a course, students will be standing up here. Students will be walking around. I have no problems with that, okay? Uh, so this is a type of classroom that you don't, you're not just supposed to sit down and say nothing. Um, so there is a lot of interactivity. So the kinesthetic intelligence is tapped into. Um, the visual and spatial intelligence is tapped into, of course, as well, right? They're drawing, but they're also walking around. They're also sort of conceptualizing certain ideas. Uh, you have linguistic intelligence that's being tapped into. Mathematical, maybe not so much, but you also have the interpersonal um, uh, intelligences that are coming into play as well. So um, multiple intelligences are better integrated in the classroom, and it favors integration of students with learning disabilities. And this is something that um, uh, Jolian is interested in, and Marie uh, Fortin are interested in, um, I believe, anyways, because uh, one of the teachers uh, received a comment about uh, just a, like a student who suffered from a disability, or a disability, a learning disability, and uh, they said that they enjoyed this classroom. It allowed them to focus or concentrate more. Um, so I can't tell you what the mechanisms of this is. Uh, why is that? I have my suspicions, but it is interesting to um, see that there's a connection between um, this room and better integration of learning disabled students. Um, and as you know, we're getting a lot more of those kinds of students in our classrooms. So challenges. What are the challenges? Like I would be, um, I would be sort of misleading you in saying that everything is perfect. There are some challenges in this classroom. The first one is management, classroom management. Um, one of the things that I noticed is um, that if you have a group of students that are not mature enough, <coughs> that do not understand uh, what learning is about as adults, um, so they want to you know, make jokes, they want to be a little bit disrespectful, um, it becomes uh, harder to manage in this classroom. Can anybody tell me why you think that is? Why would it be exacer exacerbated or highlighted? Yeah. Just an idea, I don't yeah. know for sure, but yeah. uh, perhaps the fact that uh, they're often divided into subsections, it's hard to know if there's a negative leader in each group or not. Yeah. That's exactly uh, rather it. Than no. so. That's it. Not only that, uh, so in traditional classrooms, I kind of developed this uh, sort of habit of knowing, it's not always the case, but most of the problematic students sit on the corners because it's the furthest distance from the teacher, they can hide better, I can zero them in, right? And I can sort of, okay, get them on my side. In this classroom, they can be anywhere, <laughs> and I have no say. And so before, you know, I can't catch it right at the beginning, and so it might go on, you know, that problem of classroom management to the point where I'm like, okay, what's happening here? But it's a little bit late to, to take in the reins. Um, also, the fact that it is in such a, a place, if a student wants to disturb the class, it's much easier to disturb them, right? Because they're literally at the center of the class all the time, right? Um, so it becomes challenging. You need an experienced teacher here, I believe. Um, and then uh, more potential for classroom disruptions. So moving chairs facilitates random discussions between peers. So that's another thing. If I have students that like to chat a lot, uh, we have a fashion program here, uh, and, and uh, they are very, very community-based. Uh, they like to talk a lot, uh, and that's good, but that sort of is hard sometimes, you know, because they're sitting, it's inviting discussions. But other than that, you know, I think the advantages far outweigh the disadvantages. Um, so I want to show you some examples of things that we have done in this classroom. I'm going to give you some pictures, but I'm also going to set you up with some context for a specific project, okay? This is the kind of thing that you can start doing. Um, so I'll start off with an oral presentation, ESL. So this is my class. Um, the way we were organized was in a U shape. Um, and as you can see, there's a little hint of this. 
um, the, um, what do you call this, a poof? Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, a thing for your, for your legs is right there. And in fact, the students um, that were presenting were actually sitting they're backwards to the Eno board, but as you notice, there's a magnetic strip on their table. So they were controlling their PowerPoint presentation through this. Okay. Um, and this is something I didn't talk about, the Eno's board. I will talk about it a little bit later. But it's interesting, because you can walk around. I can give you the reins, and I'll do that a little bit later. And you can take control of the PowerPoint. I just give you the pen, and it's yours, right? Uh, so you don't need to be at the board. I'm staying in front because of the um, webcast, so I want to make it easier for the cameraman. But I don't have to be here, there, okay? Um, so, okay, so here we go. Um, this is an ESL course uh, from another teacher. And uh, notice how they're using the different levels, okay, to work in groups. Um, and I thought that was really interesting. This was actually during break time. This picture was taken um, on the blog, so that's quite interesting. Um, okay, there's another project that I sort of want to show you. And this is from a teacher in special care counseling. She teaches um, an intercultural class. It's about how you integrate different um, sort of cultures in our system. Now, as you all know, Native American uh, students or Native American people are, are sort of, they have a, a very tragic history in Canada. So one of the chapters in her course is to make students who are going to be special care counselors to understand, have empathy for this really uh, unique culture that they don't necessarily have empathy for. So what she decided to do was she decided to say, well, OK, there's a few things. This culture, I have to say this, um, understands storytelling in uh, an educational way. They use storytelling to uh, share values and education and sort of um, lessons and how the world works, their vision of the world. Now, short of getting a shaman or a leader from the Native American tribes to come in and tell the students a story so that they can experience it, she can't really do that. So what did she do? Well, she integrated a video game in her classroom. Uh, the video game is actually made by Native American people. They got a, a bursary. It's called <laughs> Never Alone. And she got essentially four stations, two laptops. So four stations, four projectors, two laptops. Um, uh, two iPads that we, uh, that we brought, and she made them play. And they were sitting all in groups, and I want to show you the video. They're sitting all in groups and playing, essentially, this game. Now, why would they play this game? Because there's a character, she has to run away, she has to solve this problem. In, uh, in any case, as they're playing, there's also video clips of uh, documentaries of Native American people talking about their values, their cultures, and what it represents in the game. So say there's a, a fox, what does the fox represent in their culture? Uh, there's a spirit that helps the girl escape, what does the spirit represent? So they're watching a documentary, playing a game, and experiencing empathy. What's interesting about this is that in this room, they, she was allowed to implement this game in her classroom. She didn't ask them to play it at home because of the features, because of the power cords, because of the walls, because of the ability to move around. Okay? So I want to show you this video. And uh, you'll, see, you'll see students really engaged um, in the process. Um, uh, I had a better I had a better video in terms of like their reactions, but um, it, the focus was off. So I'm going to show this one. The reactions aren't as crazy, but it's still interesting. Um, so one of them is sitting using the Eno projector. So they're sitting as a group, right? Then you have another one at the station there. Right. You have one playing at her, her iPad. So these guys want to play individually. They don't want to play in teams. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And then on a projector, it's what's on her iPhone. Um, and I was using the walls, as you can see. Or Pascal was using the walls. I wasn't using the walls. Um, See, and there's two people there. Um, so you hear the we, right? You hear, you, hear, you know, um, it, it, it is interesting. It's not, you know, wow, mind blowing, but it, it's just, it's, it's interesting that you can start trying these kinds of experiences, making the class more interactive due to the layout of this classroom. I've tried doing this, as I said, in traditional classrooms. It's not easy. Uh, the tables are most of the times really fixed. They're not very movable. I can't pair them up into teams like that. I mean, I could 
try to attach uh, tables, but then the cord, the power cords don't fit. It's a pain, okay? This makes this possible, okay? So that's one of the things. Finally, um, um, how are we doing for time? Um, so there's another thing in English literature. Uh, so um, a, a teacher, Anna Maiello, uh, was working with her students, and you know she put the, the couch pretty much in the center of the room because she was like trying to figure out what to do with the couch. Um, and so you get your students; they're working, they're writing on the table, they're chilling out. You know, you've got a nice cap. Um, and and uh, you know, and, and this is break time as well. Uh, this was interesting because it was actually break time, and there was one team that still decided to work on the whiteboards, even though you know there was it wasn't an exam. There was no pressure. Uh, they could have taken a break, but they didn't. Um, they kept on working. Uh, so again, these are some examples that are possible. Um, um, do you have any thoughts? Any questions? No. Any, any sort of, okay. So, okay, so you have this idea. I want to present the Eno Smart Board to you. And then after this, I want to ask you to do an activity so that you can see the features at work in this room. Hopefully it'll work, crossing my fingers. Um, but what about the Eno Smart Board? What can that give? So let me present the Eno Smart Board to you. The first thing I'm going to do is the easiest thing in the world. Um, I'm going to give you this strip. And I want you to look at it. There's a series of icons right here. Now, if you wanted to move forward in your PowerPoint slip, um, by the way, there's a pen. There's a camera on this pen. All you have to do is put it on there. How would you move forward or backwards on this PowerPoint presentation? There you go. You figured it out without me saying anything, right? It's intuitive, OK? Um, what? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Well, the thing is with this is because you need a pen. Right? <laughs> and um, what's interesting is I don't want to get too much into the technology, but it really fascinated me because it's the same technology as my smart pen. Um, there are millions of dots here, okay? Microscopic dots. Well, not microscopic. You could see them. But there are dots here. And the camera reads those dots and tells it. It's like functions. It tells it what to do uh, to some extent. So uh, it's really cool. It gets away from the smart board where you have these actual physical buttons. You can take this with you. It's a strip. Okay, and it's very intuitive. As I asked you, okay, where, where do you go your PowerPoint? Do you want to actually get up and, and try to use it? Um, if I wanted you to write um, notes on, well, this is going to be hard, tricky. Actually, you know what? I'll do something easy. You wanted to write uh, with a red marker or a red pen, a red ink. How would you do it? Okay. Well, that's going to have to go away. Well, you, you want to erase that, actually. Erase that for me. How would you do it? Yeah, you'd have to go to the board, though. <laughs> Well, there we go. You can erase it. There's a faster way to do it, but that's good. This could start. Now you want to write. You want to write in orange because you feel orange today. Uh, <laughs> oh, there we go. OK. So you want to write. You want to erase. You've already got that. You want to highlight. How would you do it? Well, there we go. So the icons, the bottom a line is, the icons that you see in front, because I'm going to show you something really interesting, um, are very intuitive. I mean, there's a picture of an eraser for erasing and so on. Um, there's also these interesting icons up here. So obviously, the one with the arrow, it's hard to see from the camera, but it, it suggests that you're controlling the mouse. Uh, but what did these do? Um, click on this for, for fun um, and see what happens. Now, try to write something. OK. Hello, OK. Now, you want another slide, because you want to continue writing. And you filled up your page. What would you do? And there we go, page number two. And if you want to go back to page number one, you just go back. So again, I'm not telling her what to do. She figured it out on her own. It's super intuitive, OK? Um, and this can be saved to the cloud. So when you come back to class and you want to continue your notes, you can do that. There's an icon actually with a cloud. Um, you click on that. You choose your favorite cloud service, Dropbox, OneDrive, whatever. Um, save to cloud, OK, because it's already, it's already configured. Um, there is also the ability to open files, to save it on your computer as well, not on the cloud. Um, and you can come back and use it. Now, I don't use this feature as often. Well, <laughs> that's it. Thank you. Well, thanks. Um, and, oh, you have different palettes. If you're an artist, 
go and have fun because you've got all these colors to do. Um, so that's essentially what's really interesting about this. There is one last slide that I sort of want to show. It's a flashlight thing, um, but it has to, this is sort of your ability to highlight, right? That's what you showed me. Do, do you want to show it? No, okay. Okay. Um, so you can highlight. All right, some certain things. Um, and uh, obviously, there's a calibration screen. So again, just a magnetic strip. You can stick it on to anywhere you want. There we go. Stick it on to this. And you, know, you ask your students to take control of it. Oops, take control of it. They're unbreakable. Uh, take, take control of it. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, and it's, it's really intuitive. Um, so uh, you can have several magnetic strips. Yeah, go on. Yeah, you want to do that? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you'd, have to, you'd have to click on the flashlight. It's a flashlight. I'm sorry. A, no, it's fine. And there we go. And then you can do... Uh, like Why, what I like, it's, oh. for example, oh. if you have to show yeah. answers, yeah. you just do like that. There we go. Ooh. Oh, it's supposed to work. <laughs> it's supposed to work. There we go. Yeah, so you can sort of do games. Um, and uh, for ESL, it's really cool to be doing that. So that's, that's great. Um, so again, the Eno Smart Board allows you to do many things. And when I get into groups, I'm going to give you like an activity. If someone's brave enough to want to use this for the activity, you can do that. And then you can present it quite easily. Or you can use the whiteboard. It's up to you what you're going to be doing. Or, or just post-it notes. Um, do you have any lingering questions? Yes? How would you compare the cost of an Eno board to a Smart Board? Jayan, <laughs> do you know? Uh, uh, I don't have the specific. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That used to that. Uh, so I do not have the list of prices, so I don't know the the price for this. I think it's cheaper, but how um, how cheaper? I don't know, but I can look for the information and give it to you or to everyone. Yeah. Well, that's it. Um, let me just get back to my PowerPoint. Okay. Well, that's it. I think it's cheaper. My experience, again, and this is not the experience of everybody, because I asked teachers at Dawson. They have a really amazing collaborative room. Um, and they have lots of smart boards in the room. I don't know if you got the advantage of seeing this. It was quite interesting. Uh, six, you know, uh, smart boards. What's interesting is they like the smart boards. My experience with it has not been positive. I did not like using it. I love <coughs> using this though um, because it's just, for me, it's just more intuitive. It just made sense. There was a lot of functions in the smart board uh, that seemed very complicated to me to sort of get around. You really had to teach yourself how to do certain things, like learning how to, a new language almost. Um, this is just, I don't need to do anything. You can see, like right off the bat, you figure it out, you know? Um, so I really like the Eno board. I think it's cheaper as well. And what's really cool, and this, this is just blows my mind, um, um, you know, you can draw in this. Oh my god, smart board, you wouldn't be able to do this. This is a whiteboard. This is no different than this board right here. It has no difference. You could write on it, you could erase it, you could do whatever you want, and you will not damage the screen. The screen will not be warped. It's a whiteboard. Effectivement. Oui. C'est pareil. Right. Add, um, the grant that we got were the first ones in Canada to have grants from Steelcase. It's open to Canada and the United States, and the value of that specific room is uh, around between sixty and $70,000. Yeah. So the Eno board is a part of this, but I don't know the Yeah, other. how much it is. <laughs> we could find out, though. Yes, uh, I will. We could certainly find out, yeah. Yeah, that's it. It's, uh, we were very fortunate to get it. But that's true, Julianne. We, we were really floored because Mathieu Lepin put the pr proposal, and we're the first Canadian school, as she said, to, to get this. American schools uh, have won this before, but not Canadian ones. Um, so we're very fortunate, very, very, very fortunate to have it. Um, OK, yeah. No. Uh, two que two questions. Uh, can you have two smart pen on one in the board? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, yes, I do believe you can have them recognized. Now, can you do it simultaneously? Yeah. I've never tried okay. that. Um, and can you use the stripe as a mouse? I don't or think you can. You need to go to the board. You need to go to the board. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you can. The only. That's a really good question. Officially, I don't know because I haven't read the documents. I'm sure there might be some accessories or device. I already have, like with my smart pens, I could hook up my iPad and then I could control yeah. this through the iPad, like using reflector or something. But so you could do it, but not this. When you had a link, could yeah. you click on it? Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 Because you, do, you did it with yeah. your mouse. Yeah. Right. Oh, I could click on it. Yes. I s yeah, I did it with my mouse. Oh, so yeah. Yeah, for example, <laughs> if we stress. go here. Okay, uh, sure. Uh, enable editing. 
Can you arrive and just touch with your pen and open yeah. this link? I probably can if we have internet. Um, so, pen, do your magic, please work. Okay, <laughs> here we go. It should work. Uh, I, I shouldn't be too worried. Um, yeah, good. And it's, you know, the magic is happening. Uh, <laughs> I would like to mention that Jonathan said I did not read the document on how to use this. Yeah. 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 Well, that's the point, right? And I think that's the, the problem. Like, ultimately, when we talk about technology, one of the biggest problems is accessibility, is simplicity. Uh, that's what Apple got so right with their devices, and that's what you know, Androids sort of failed to do and still are struggling. And I think that's, that's the key here, right? And I think um, one of the things, again, that's my opinion, the smart board does not achieve that for me, but it does achieve it with this. So again, I'm not a, I'm not, I don't work for this company. I don't even know what this company is. It's called the Uno Smart Board. But I just, I, from experience, I really feel like this is a really <laughs> cool board. Um, in any case, OK. It um, is actually very simple to use, <laughs> because I arrived the other day, and uh, I tried a few buttons, and it was working. And it took me about three minutes to understand the whole. Uh, the whole process. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's true, eh? Yeah. yeah. It's true, yeah. Um, OK. Um, so there we go. You have the video. OK, so what I want to do is, uh, since we have around 15 minutes, um, I want you to take a look at, at these pictures and notice they're sourced. OK, uh, so <laughs> take these pictures, OK? Um, and, uh, and I want you to do something for me. So you've got three teams and two people. However you want to do it, I'm not going to tell you how to do it. I want you to look at these pictures, and I want you to organize them in chronological order into a narrative. So a beginning, a middle, and an end. Okay. How do these pictures connect to each other? And the next thing I'm going to ask you to do is to just draw five slides, six you know, of stick figures. You don't have to be fancy in your drawings. But create a comic strip that illustrates that story. And finally, present it one team, because we don't have enough time, can present it to the class. Okay. Um, and now, some teams, you can use the whiteboards. You can use three whiteboards, four whiteboards, five whiteboards. I don't care. Put it there for the presentation. You can use the Eno smartboard if you want to. Um, or you can simply use the table. the table. Yeah, why not? Use the table. Uh, but do it anyhow you want. You have your pens. Uh, just try to do it. And I want you to, essentially, the point of this exercise is I want you to experience, first of all, the flexibility of the room, but also how it feels to present to the class as a student. Um, and you see it's actually quite easy. It takes away a lot of the stress um, for a lot of students. Um, so just, I'll give you like five minutes. Take a look at it. You know, you've got Shakespeare. You've got a grave. You've got the uh, tour de peas. Uh, you have, um, you know, a nice flower with an old book. And you have a guitar. Any romantics at heart? Uh, figure out a story. Uh, or tragic people uh, like tragedies. This is yours. Um, go forth. And you can grab some boards. Do, do whatever you want. Um, on it. You can grab several boards if you want. Um, you have erasers as well. Um, you can sit down on the couch if you want. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you write that, or is it? <laughs> okay, you have an eraser. Here you go. Um, sorry. So what kind of ideas do you guys have? Oh, Tragic. sorry. OK. Tragic. Yeah, it's Tragedy. It's going to end until the end. OK. <laughs> so this is the last one. Yeah. It's going to end with death. Yeah. Tragedy. <laughs> OK. All right. Fair enough. Oh, fuck. Let's go. Oh, you're stuck alone. Yeah, she's she abandoned uh, you. The, the bladder. Uh, <laughs> what the are, what are called? So what, which one's the last one? What order are you going to have? Well, yeah, I'm uh, thinking that the piece has the first one kind of brings us straight to see what she's going to say. I'm going to say that uh, Shakespeare was actually uh, 
Oh, mais tu sais, je voulais pas discuter avec elle. Euh, <rire> euh, so, uh, it's a terrible piece. I just don't think it's going to be hit by lightning. It's very difficult to do. So, it's actually really shit to do. It's very difficult. And he comes back to life, takes the guitar, and serenades. <laughs> That's awesome. I, nobody has ever thought about that. That, that, that kind of, I had my own story, but I never thought about coming back to life. I always, oh, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> that's a death is. C'est rouge, hein, si tu veux. Euh, ou bleu, ou. Euh, euh, je sais pas. À moins que ce soit comme un Ouais. Tiens. <rire> tu peux changer de couleur, si tu veux. C'est comme le petit signe en bleu. C'est comme le petit signe en bleu. C'est comme le petit signe en bleu. Je ne sais pas ce que c'est. Je pense que c'est le rose avec le livre. Oh, avec le livre, oui, le rose avec le livre. Oh, oui, ça fait sens. Non. <laughs> If anybody wants to try this chair, and, you know, so yeah, try it. Give it a shot. You can actually adjust the height. You can adjust the height by pressing this if you want. Uh, it can go down. It can go up. Um, but all right. Does the student this disturb you when you teach? No. No, not my experience. But again, it's it's a question of maturity. Uh, and I did have uh, some issues with maturity. Uh, one student said, can I sit on the couch? I said, no problem. But as time went by, uh, she would, uh, but not, no, worse, with her winter boots, she would put it on the couch. And I told her to stop. And she would be like, why? And, and then eventually, she started lying down on her stomach while I was teaching with her legs up, you know, like she's on her bed. Uh, those are, are the issues I'm talking about. But that's not the room. That's the student, you know? Oh, <laughs> why? It's really cool. The, the seats themselves can be um, adjusted as well. If, I don't know if you know, the heights can be adjusted as well. It's on the other side. Yeah. Ouais, je vais le présenter. Oui, on a, on a à peu près cinq autres minutes. Peut-être si tout le monde veut se présenter. Oui. Ok. Ok. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to wait another two more minutes and people are going to present. So for those of you online, we're going to be presenting in two minutes their uh, assignment. Oui, ouais, moi, moi c'est ils le font à chaque cours. On a, on a des brosses, puis toutes les profs leur disent. C'est ça, ben, mais c'est ça, c'est un bon temps fort, c'est ça. Il y a aussi le the challenge, c'est aussi le, justement euh, leur image. Fait que, when we, we have to establish a protocol where the tables are in a certain way when you come into the room and when you leave the room. And that has been a little bit of a challenge, but not huge. It's possible. It's uh, at the HEC Montreal, yeah. they have a um, screenshot of how they want the communication of the class. So when the teacher arrives in class, he shows the configuration and the student plays the yeah. table. So That's exactly it. Yeah. That's another example. I didn't um, show the configurations. I forgot to put a slide. There are different possible configurations. I didn't show the configurations that are possible. Um, okay. Um, I have to access internet. Do you know what the uh, what the Okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. 
Was it hard? Donc, je, just, to, just to let you know, we, uh, the teams are now uh, doing a storytelling, doing a kind of a beta style thing. So we're going to come back in, let's say, two, three minutes yeah, with uh, three minutes. one of the team presenting uh, what they're doing. Okay, the backslash? No. <laughs> well, what the hell? Okay, you know what? Screw this. Uh, backslash there. You got it. Yeah. Just uh, the internet, uh, go, go to the document in the internet. Um. Okay, so we're going to present. Um, and as we're doing that, I, I just realized that we never actually showed you the possible configurations for the table. Uh, I wanted to experience that or experiment with that, and that's why I kind of didn't have a slide. But I think the best thing we could do is to show you that. Um, I think, non, c'est pas rémunération. Ah oui? Formation. Formation, OK. One second. Yes, this is the one. Um, this. So here you have, um, if we can make this uh, so bigger, I don't know where I put the pen. The smart pen. Yeah, what do you buddy. Oh, c'est peut-être moi. Okay. Uh, so if if we could sort of yeah, there we go. Um, so you know these are the possible configurations, and there are many more. There are tons more, but you can have them you know sort of looking personalized learning. So depending on how they want to work. Um, here you go. Peer to peer group, right? Uh, discussion presentation in class lecture. Um, I must say this one works well for like if I were to do a you know a presentation or a cinema course where they're watching a film, uh, for instance. Uh, so you know this is much more of a presentation discussion. But I actually take the table away, and I actually put a couch here. Um, but you know these are the possible things. You can form them in triangles as well. Uh, you can do something like this, <laughs> for instance. Uh, well, I mean, let me use this. You can use something like this. Um, so you can have a table like this, and then another table like that, and then another table like, uh, well, you know, um, oh boy, like that kind of thing. Okay, um, and then you'd have two people here. Um, you can do many, many things. Essentially, you can have a high table separating them, right? And you, the teacher, actually can have your table here in the middle of the room, essentially away from everything else. And you become the center, and you're sort of looking at what's going on. And then you have uh, three tables here, and so on. There are many configurations possible. You really, you just use your imagination. Give it a shot. And um, you can practice also changing the table with the students at the beginning of the year. They like that. Uh, say, OK, we're going to roll the tables. Take out the locks, because there's locks on the, on the chairs. Uh, you know, push off the locks and go, go for it. So it's kinesthetic, it gets them interested. Okay, but anyways, let's get back to the assignment. Uh, so thank you for those who are online to be patient uh, for, uh, for this. But basically we have some stories. Does anybody want to present their story for me? Tell me a story, friend. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so Ryan and, uh, what is your name, by the way? Marie-Claude. Marie-Claude. Marie <laughs> do you want to do it in front? How do you want to do it? It's up to you. Here. Okay, so the way you put it in is you uh, you rock it. You just have to rock it like. Yeah, it's hard, but you just rock it. Yeah, yeah you'll turn it. <laughs> that would be a little bit hard, eh, uh, for the camera. So um, you know what? Let's do it uh, this way. I'll hold it. Yeah. Yeah. Or you could just. Oh yeah. Okay, you could do it in front. Yeah, it's it's better in front. Okay. So we're doing this for the camera, but just know that <coughs> students can show it from their table. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we went for a uh, classic story, a tragedy, so, uh, inspired by Shakespeare. We have Romeo and Juliet. Uh, Romeo's giving the flower we saw in the book. Um, and then they're in front of the Pisa Tower, and he's 
out and um, kills Romeo. So the <laughs> end. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Bravo. Um, <laughs> Ryan, do you want to perhaps use a different method to present it? Do you want to present it, say, in um, sure. this way? You can, you can sort of put it on the board and you can sort of present it. Now imagine if you had several whiteboards. If you used for each, each, oh. ca uh, each uh, cause, if you used um, a box, for each box you used one of these, yep. you could have done an entire strip right here. And maybe we could have had uh, four groups doing four different cells and rearrange yep. them. And yep. So uh, we took a bit of artistic license with historical facts and things like that. But essentially, um, this is Shakespeare's grave that's next to the Tower of Pisa. Uh, for some reason, uh, his grave was moved to Italy from England. <laughs> Uh, and all of a sudden there is a lightning strike that uh, hits the Tower of Pisa and uh, there's also a, an equal lightning strike that reanimates uh, Shakespeare. And so this is sort of the horror genre, I would say. Uh, so you can see Shakespeare, his hand coming out, a poor tourist with a guitar, uh, drops the guitar, uh, essentially has a myocardial infarction uh, in this uh, slide here, uh, while uh, Shakespeare is doing a little tune and uh, the rose that we saw is one of the pictures, finally, he puts it on the dead guy. So there's kind of a role reversal uh, type thing happening here. So we don't think that death is the end. We think it's the beginning of the story. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's The Walking, walking Dead. dead. The Very walking topical. Dead. That's funny. Um, hang on. Okay, well that's uh, well that's good. Um, there was other students who showed, and, and that's the thing, Ryan, and I want to emphasize this: is I could get like five people here, and you could draw their all all their all the squares, you know, different art styles, and then show the story right here, and everybody's having a blast. And that's the thing: it's learning and making it fun, right? They don't realize that they're doing something. Oh, well, you know, essentially they're doing literature, right? You know, they're talking about Shakespeare, man. Right? It's like really <laughs> okay, uh, but some students. Don't like it. Anyways, so that's the idea in a nutshell. I really hope it gave you a sense of what this room is. Um, and I, I personally, as a final note, would say that if your school can invest in, in just at the basic minimum these whiteboards, um, at, at, like that is the number one thing I would recommend that you take back. Uh, although it seems low tech. It's, it's actually really cool um, to, to have these boards and grab a board and here's your you know, dry markers. And so for a traditional classroom, without changing the setup necessarily, just have those boards on the wall. That's all you need. And uh, you can do a lot of things uh, with that. But obviously the bonus is with these tables, it's, <coughs> it's incredible as well, right? You can do this profound thing. Well, Jonathan, maybe some of the wonders were not oh, answered. the wonder. Oh, boy. OK, yes. Um, OK, wonder. Uh, what is, what is, oh, OK. What, what is, oh, what is the owning for? That? That is the owning? OK. No, what is the owning yeah. for? OK. I don't know. <laughs> That's, that's a, I didn't even know that word. Uh, well, I, I'm sure I heard it, but I just didn't know. Uh, so, okay. Uh, well, I, I, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I think it's a halo. You know, you're an angel. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how how um, wait, how and couch and small table you? Okay. How are the couch and small tables used? It's a good question. Um, but yeah, but we I think we answered that. Yes. Mobile. Mobile learning electricity. Mobile learning electricity. Yeah. Anybody wants to comment on that? Uh, because at work of each. Yeah. In our classroom, we're, we are looking to use a um, uh, mobile uh, juice pack or the the, the yeah. telephone, yeah. but yeah. use it for the laptop beside using uh, this pole. Okay. So we're looking at these because uh, electricity is a big concern in uh, our classroom. So the Wi-Fi is okay, but electri and, um, w wireless electricity is, uh, doesn't exist yet. So uh, we looked toward this, but we were looking right. to the. What is this, is this a university or a CJEP? A CJEP. Okay, so the class, so it's not a lecture base. Yeah, uh, those are really good because the only thing that's getting in your way is just one power yeah. cord, and uh, there's six of them. So you could charge uh, your laptop. You could charge many different things, um, but. but 
you're right in saying, you know, say if you have a, a juice pack, especially um, a juice pack, a, a battery pack, yeah. uh, especially the ones that are coming out with uh, HDMI C, uh, not HDMI C, but USB C, yeah. um, they can power entire laptops yeah. at this point, and they're really cheap, 80 bucks or so. So imagine you have that hooked up, and then, you know, the, the, the sort of the power, and then to the laptop, to the iPad, to everything else. So you can do this kind of network, and it just, on the floor, there's no possibility of tripping. So I, w I would look into those, but I don't know how much they are. Um, yeah. Okay. And and then um, electricity. Okay. What about what about uh, this one? Um, okay. Comment gérer la cohabitation de pièces? Aha. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> I had a, a costume failure. Um, okay. Comment gérer la cohabitation de pièces de mobilité? Um, Très différent. Ah, OK. You are, you are, you are really OK. C'est déjà répondu. Hein? OK. Uh, coût? Yeah. Uh, coût, c'est cher. Mais comme je te... Je, uh, as I was saying, I should speak in English. As I was saying, honestly, like, this is sort of sprinkles. Uh, it's good, but it's not essential. The whiteboards, I'm telling you, is key here, okay? Uh, but but obviously, like I said, the chairs, the rolling chairs are, are also, I would say, really cool. Then the tables, you know, uh, the tables, you can move it even if there's no wheels, so you can just use regular tables. But I would say the whiteboards uh, and the chair. And then finally, if you're looking for interactive board, I would recommend this more than the smart board. Um, it's no chose, no different section. Okay, for different tasks, different sections for different tasks. This is interesting. What is that about? You're just wondering about. <laughs> you now you have to repeat your. <laughs> uh, um, so you're wondering about the lounge. You were saying. Yeah, if, if the different sections were for different tasks. So if yeah. it was more uh, like the couch was for collaborative and then. Yeah. Like. You could you could do that. I've never tried doing that. But you could create sections where, okay, in this section, you're going to brainstorm, you know? And in this section, you're going to actually get to the editing process. I'm thinking more in literature. Uh, in this section, you're going to, you know, look at the theory. And you can actually sort of ask them to, to literally walk around the stations, you know, and, and change. That could be really cool, actually. That's a great idea. Thank you. Yeah, I like it. Uh, thank you. Uh, four more minutes. Yeah, four more minutes? Okay, yeah. four more minutes. Am I, am I wandering too much? Okay, yeah. two. Okay, how technology projector can support peer-based learning? Wow, that's a broad question. Who, who wants to talk about that? Uh, oh, do that, you, was yeah. really that was you? Okay. <laughs> I have another question. Yes, okay. Uh, actually, uh, or just a statement about the cost of uh, this, this type of room or procuring uh, furniture and... and um, from what I understand, uh, most of the colleges, uh, at least in the public system, uh, they get a certain amount of grant money for special needs students. Mm -hmm. And if there can be a demonstration that these technologies specifically uh, help special needs students, that may be a way of financing, uh, procuring some of these things, which will ultimately benefit all of the students in the yeah. room. So just maybe an idea about how to procure. Yeah. And to piggyback on that just very quickly, um, we know that there are more students uh, that are uh, sort of diagnosed officially with learning disabilities. We also know that we need to integrate them in regular classrooms. Um, my suspicions, and that's because I have people working in the field, are that the adapted services in schools are, are sort of going to have less of a role to implement them and more teachers are going to have to take this on. And so if we can get classrooms, again, like this, that's going to help towards that. So I'm just piggybacking on, on you. I think it's a really good strategy to say, you know, this is for learning uh, disability, but also other students. It's for the integration of all uh, students. And that ties into universal design and so on and so on. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, yeah, you can ask for that. There Absolutely. are three, just two minutes left. Okay. So uh, I'm wondering, do you have any questions uh, that we, we haven't answered? Yeah? Was it good? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everybody. I, I, I wanted to just to thank the people online uh, for your patience, um, but I also wanted to thank you guys, honestly, for being 
sports, good sports about it as well. Uh, so, so no, thank you guys. Like seriously, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but that's it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks.